guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. In the following two episodes, we'll be working with lighting and once more inside Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to learn about the directional light, the exponential height fog, and also we're going to add a post-process volume and a light method importance inside the first part and in the second part I'm going to show you guys how to recreate this nice little cloudy sky that we have on top over here. Uh, mind you it's a basic cloudy sky but it's a neat trick to learn in the beginning so stay tuned. Alright so to light up our scene outside so uh, first off we're gonna have to, rec uh, to, to add a new level because we're gonna have three parts to our level so you have the first part here, another part here, another one later on. So the first part might not always be loaded. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a new level, call it stage dash two dash master. And let's go ahead and open that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the two dash one and we're going to bring it inside our master level. Now that way, since the light is always going to be inside our scene and we never want it to be unloaded we're going to put it inside our persistent level which is in our case the master level so here's the four component we're going to work with today so let's bring them in so we have the directional light like this we have the exponential height fog and we have our uh, post-process volume and a light mass importance volume. There we go. So now, the first one over here we're going to start with is the light. So let's go ahead and go inside lit mode. So you're going to see right now that the light is abundant, it's very strong, it doesn't really look like a cloudy day at all outside. So the first thing you're going to want to play with is the actual intensity. So let's put that to, let's lower it to 1. You can see right away the way it reacts on your surface. It's a lot better. Now the way the directional light works is like a sunlight. And so in our case, uh, you can see all the hard shadows, which we're not going to be needed since we're making a cloudy scene. So when you look outside and it's cloudy, you're going to see that the, the light really pans out and it goes all around. And there's not these real hard shadows anywhere because the sun reflects on the uh, clouds and it disperses the light all over the place pretty much equally. So let's try to recreate this together. So first off, we're not going to need the cast shadows. That way it really disperses a little bit more the, the light. And what we're going to do is just to play with the rotation of the disk, we're going to start moving the disk around. So there's no real disk right now in the sky, but this is how the directional light works. So you can see the little arrow uh, moves up and down, just depending on where you want the sun to be. For my case, it's pretty much like in the center, but that's just for me. You guys are going to be able to play with this after. Next in the light, you can uh, play with the uh, direction, uh, mobility and whatnot. You can add or put the shadow if you want. You can also play with the color if you want. There's all these settings that you can play with. Uh, also the minimum roughness if you don't want the light to reflect too much. But this is all stuff that you can go on and play with to get the effect you want to get. Next up, we have uh, the exponential height fog. So that's the thing we're going to use to add some fog inside our scene. So we're, you're going to see right away at the beginning that the it, it still looks like an outside day scene uh, without sky, uh, without uh, sunlight, is because we want to change the color. You can see right away that the main focus is here. If, if, I, if I start putting it towards more uh, gray look, you're going to see right away that it starts getting the effect we want. Now we don't see much fog is because the density is at 0 0.2 so let's put this to 0 0.15 I think and you see right there we already have fog. But I know what, you, what you're going to say it's uh, still very 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 bright and the reason being is like always in Unreal Engine the way they recreate the uh, scene is they use auto exposures to uh, make the eye adaptation uh, realistic. So if I were to step outside and it's sunny, my eyes would have to adapt and it would be this little effect that my eyes perceive with the light. So we want to remove that. 
and the best way is to use the post process volume and normally what you're going to do is you're going to scale it to englobe your level but we're not going to do this uh, do that this time since we know that the level is going to be huge and we just want the whole level to be applied we're just going to go to uh, scroll down over here and we're going to check the unbound over here that way if you read the uh, little text over here it says that it's going to affect our whole world so now we can just go and get our auto exposure and just click on check those two options over here and put them to the minimum brightness and the full brightness to be at one an equal measure and then if you look down you're gonna see that oh it's really starting to look like an outside scene now you don't have to worry much about the sky because there's gonna be a sky we're gonna to build together in our next episode but now with the fog you can see already that it's still not that much fog you can play with those settings for my hand uh, maybe I would put it uh, you can play with the start distance you can choose if you want the fog to start right at, on the ground or a little bit higher in my case I think I prefer having it on the ground and for the height is how high you want your fog to go uh, I'm okay with that over here maybe 0 0.2 for the fog Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Now you're going to see, from there on in, it's pretty much how you want your light to be. So if you see that uh, there's still little shadows over here, and you want to work that, you can just drag a, in a point light and just put it in. And as long as you remove the shadows, you're going to see that you can pretty much use one just to create the effect you want. And just put it, I don't know, less strong. And there you go. Now it's uh, still not good. I can play with the minimum roughness of the light and just put it to one that way it, it doesn't really pan out there's all these settings that you can play with just to make your scene realistic and to get the effect that you want and the last thing I would add is a light mass importance now a, I'm gonna ask the public for this one uh, you have to englobe your level with it I still didn't see the unbound option to make sure that the uh, uh, light mass works for your whole level and I think I understand why because logically if it would affect your whole level then it would it would defy the purpose of the light mass importance because the way that it works is that when you're gonna build your lighting inside the scene so build lighting info it's gonna calculate only what's inside the bounding box but if you decide to make the whole level the reason we put this is because the light over here, the directional light, travels infinitely. So if I were to calculate my level right now, it would go so far, it would take a lot more time to calculate the light because the light doesn't know where it should stop calculating. But with the light mass importance, you get that end result. You know where the light should stop being calculated because that's where your player is going to be. So hope you enjoyed this and now you can go ahead and play with those settings just to get your scene uh, to work as it is. I'm going to do it too but I'm not going to waste your time watching me do that and this is pretty much what you want the result to be. And in the next part we're going to build our sky together. So have a good one. See you next